I will review, recall that voltage is defined as the total amount of work done or energy transferred to a charge per unit charge. Mathematically, this is defined as work or energy divided by Q, which is charge. Current is defined as a flow of charge, which is Q, over time. And mathematically, this is given by Q divided by T. Now, if we multiply voltage and current together, we'll multiply E over Q by Q over T. This will allow us to cancel charge in the denominator and numerator respectively. So then the product of voltage and current gives us energy divided by time, that is electrical energy divided by time. Now, since we know energy over time is known as power, we can then say electrical power is equal to voltage multiplied by current. This is the new equation for power as provided in your formula sheet. This new electrical power formula can be combined with the Ohm's law equation V equals to I times by R to derive new expressions for electrical power. For example, we can substitute current in this equation as V over R, in which case we will get power is equal to the voltage squared divided by R. In this case, the voltage V refers to the voltage drop or the potential difference across a component in the electrical circuits. Let's say we have a resistor as a component in a circuit and we happen to measure the potential difference or the voltage drop across this resistor and let's say in the beginning the voltage is 10 volts and afterwards it's 8 volts the potential difference or the voltage drop is exactly 2 volts in which case to find the electrical power that's used to push the charges across this resistor this will be equal to 2 squared divided by the resistance of this resistor R. Alternatively we can substitute and replace voltage by I times by R, in which case we'll get an expression for power as I squared R. For this equation to calculate power, we simply need to know the total amount of current that's passing through a resistor I multiplied by the resistance of this component. The two equations for electric power outlined two opposite relationships between power and resistance. In the first equation, in terms of current, it shows that power is directly proportional to resistance. Whereas in the equation, in terms of voltage, power is inversely proportional to resistance. How can this be? How can power be directly proportional and inversely proportional to resistance at the same time? Now this is a common confusion among students, so let me explain. This is because the situation in which you use each equation is different. For the first equation, this is used when current in a circuit is kept constant. For example, when we want to produce the same amount of current by changing the voltage supply to a circuit with a variable resistance. In this case, when we have a higher resistance, in order to keep the current in the circuit the same, we need to increase the voltage, or in other words, the amount of work or electric energy that's required to produce the current is increased. Since we are doing more work and requiring more energy to produce the same amount of current, that's why we have an increased power when we have an increased resistance. So power is proportional to resistance. On the other hand, the second equation is used in situations when voltage is kept constant. This is the more common scenario. For example, when we have an electric circuit with a fixed battery supply that has a fixed voltage value. So unless we replace the battery, the voltage can be assumed to be kept constant. In this instance, when we have an increased resistance of the circuits while having a constant voltage, the total current that passes through the circuit will be ultimately lower by Ohm's law. And since the battery can only produce a smaller current in the presence of this higher resistance, it delivers a smaller amount of electrical energy or electric power. So in this instance, power is inversely proportional to resistance. Electrical power also obeys the law of conservation of energy. In this instance, in the context of electric circuits, the electrical energy is transformed into other forms. For example, when work is done on charges through a resistor, 
the electrical energy or work that's involved is transformed into heat. This is known as resisted heat production. When an electric circuit contains light bulbs and lamps, the electrical energy that passes through them is transformed into light energy as well as heat. And the latter is present because these light bulbs and lamps usually contain some amount of electrical resistance. What we'll talk about next is that the brightness or how much light these lamps or light bulbs will emit is proportional to the electrical power that passes through them. An electrical kettle, when connected to a 120 volt supply, draws 13 amps of current. How much energy in joules does the kettle use over two minutes? We know electrical power is given by the voltage times by the current. The voltage is 120 volts and the current associated with this voltage is 13 amps. This gives an answer of 1560 watts of power or the other equivalent SI unit will be joules per second. So every second, this kettle will draw 1560 joules of energy. In two minutes, which is 120 seconds, the energy will be equal to the power times by the time. So 1560 multiplied by 120 seconds. This gives an answer of 1.872 times 10 to the power 5 joules of energy used over 2 minutes. A 4.5 volt battery is connected to a 25 ohm resistor. So we have a battery that's connected to a resistor of 25 ohms. The battery is 4.5 volts. How much electrical power is delivered by the battery? We know that the original equation for power is V times by I, but we can also use Ohm's law and replace the current here with voltage divided by the resistance, in which case we'll get V squared over R. So the power delivered by the battery will be equal to 4.5 volts squared divided by the total resistance of the circuit, which we assume to be 25 ohms. Of course, in this case, if the battery also has some amount of internal resistance, this will increase the resistance of the circuit as well and the power delivered will be 0.81 watts or joules per second. For part B, how much power is lost as heat by the resistor? Now, as we said, when the electrical power does work on the charges or the current as it passes through the resistor, the electrical energy is transformed into heat, which is called resistive heat production. By the law of conservation of energy, we know that energy here cannot be destroyed nor created. So the amount of power that's lost as heat will be equal to the power delivered by the battery, which will be also 0.81 watts. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.